السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most gracious, most merciful Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen all praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who has created us all the one who nourishes, cherishes, sustains, provides, protects and cures وأصلي وأسلم على أفضل الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We send complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his entire household, all his companions We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless them all and to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness and ease in this world and the next Amen <coughs> My dearest brothers and sisters, generally when we look at a baby, we think to ourselves that this baby is absolutely innocent, newborn. We get extremely happy, we get delighted, we are excited, and at the same time, <coughs> we feel that the people who have the child are very fortunate because there are so many who don't have children. May Allah bless those who don't have children with children. I mean. But we don't realize something that that child has come into this world for two missions. The first mission is a test for the parents. The second is the test for the child itself beyond a certain age so right at the beginning there is no books nothing is being written for that child you and i know the hadith says rufi al qalamu an thalathin the pen has been lifted from three types of people the three mentioned number one the one who is insane Number two, the one who is young and he has not yet grown up to the age of maturity. And number three, the one who is sleeping until he wakes up. So if you are sleeping, what you see in your dream, it's not going to be held against you. The minute you wake up, whatever you do, whatever, now you are conscious. So... From this narration, we understand that when the sabi, when a child is born, they are not, what they do is not written against them. They will mess, for example, in terms of urination or in terms of the toilet and so on. It's not their fault. They are still young. They might say words that they don't realize are bad when they are little babies and they don't even know what it means. So they are not sinful in that regard. But as they grow older, when they get to the age of maturity, then definitely they are responsible. But between the age of birth or between the time of birth and that age of maturity, the parents are responsible, the guardians are responsible, those who are around the child are responsible. To do what? To present the best possible way of living and religion and so on to that child. However, did you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He created us in order to test us? In order to test us. It is He who created death and life in order to test you, who from amongst you has better deeds. That's what he says. So he created you to test you. لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ So at that age, when you are born, already there are certain things that humankind will hold against you from the point of birth. You might say, how? Where were you born? Did you choose? No, I didn't. So I was born in a poor area where people were exploited. As soon as I was born, already they were saying, here's another one. And I was innocent. I knew nothing. That's the plan of Allah. I might have been born into a wealthy home, mashallah. 
beautiful royal people subhanallah i've never seen anything but goodness in terms of ease of living that was allah the soul in the body every one of us here we are born into a unique situation unique allah chose your village where you will be born the hospital or if you were born at home some people are born in areas where there are no hospitals they deal with midwives and the birth is at home allah knows that but you are still born today you are sitting in this masjid with the rest of the people those who were born underwater subhanallah this is allah's plan so when you are born already sometimes people hold certain things against you say for example your father has a debt of so many million may allah protect us all and may allah make it easy for those in debt to be able to pay their debt that was quite a loud i mean mashallah so what happens is your father had a debt you were born okay when you were born sometimes as you grow older you are still a young innocent child the person who your father owes the money to can be looking at you as a person who's already responsible for something he didn't even do and he might say come and work for me or him your father might say go work for this man i owe him money already you are disadvantaged from the point of birth that the world out there is not fair but allah is fair how fair is allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a human being such that he or she can adapt, can adapt to many, many situations. I give you an example. If you are born in a very, very hot country where there is no air condition, there is no system of electricity, nothing else. When you're born, you are young, you get used to it. You become a person who doesn't mind. You are out in the hot weather and you are playing and you don't mind because from the time of birth, you are used to that. Your body got accustomed to it. Even the tone of your skin changed according to that. That's Allah's plan, Allah's gift. Person of the same nationality born in a castle where they have air condition from day one. If they go out and the weather is only 39 degrees, which for you and I in Qatar is very cold. If you go out to 39 degrees and they will not be able to even live. Subhanallah. The other day it was 44, 45 degrees. Yesterday was very hot. Subhanallah. And I was thinking to myself, amazing how people coming from Britain, sometimes they cannot cope. They cannot stand even a few minutes outside sometimes. But you get used to it. Those who've lived here for a while, they start saying, this is nothing. You still have to see the middle of summer. That's what they will say. This is nothing. You still have to see the middle of summer. So Allah's gift, acknowledge it, that Allah has made you such that you can become accustomed. You have people who are born into poor homes. They did not choose to be born into a poor home. But wallahi, the food they have, very different from the, the food that those who are wealthy have fed their children with. You know, on one hand, you have the various uh, cereals and the baby meals that are very expensive, that are found at top supermarkets and so on. The other hand, you know what? These people were brought up with breast milk and that's it. Subhanallah. That's it. And sometimes they were brought up with something very light. They also had their system. The point is when you got to a certain age, today we are sitting here. No one can tell when you were a baby, what were you fed? You don't even know sometimes. What struggles your mother and father went through in order to make sure that you were a person who grew up with a decent upbringing. You don't even know. And this is why it's important for us to go back to our parents make dua for them appreciate them in a good way where they are instructing you to do something bad we will excuse ourselves because allah comes first subhanahu wa ta'ala but where they are telling you to do something reasonable within their limits then you should try your best to obey they did for you do you know it's allah's gift to mankind that he has created love between parents and children there is a love think about it it's Allah's plan. There is love. Why? They feel responsible. If Allah wanted to make us, He could have created us separately. Each individual grows on his own from the ground. It was possible. But what would be the link between people? There would be no fulfillment of rights. I grew up on my own. Who's your father? What father? I was born from the ground. I just came up like a plant and I went up. 
Even plants, they have seeds, they have the parent tree where the seeds came from and so on. It's Allah's plan. If he wanted, wallahi, he could have kept us totally separate. But he created us. He says, the minute you get married, جَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Mawadda and Rahma, love and mercy. Between who? Spouse, the spouses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us love and mercy. If your aim is to please Allah and her aim is to please Allah, there will be love and mercy. But if your aim is to buy the latest gadgets and to please your haram desires, and if her aim is, for example, to live off the luxuries of life, then you don't expect that mawaddatan wa rahmatan. That's where it goes wrong. But if your aim is Allah and you want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will definitely be mawaddatan wa rahmatan. You are going to think that I am married to someone's daughter. She also has parents or she had parents. She has siblings, a family. She also grew up. She is a human being. If you touch her, she feels. If you cut her, she will bleed just like me. Let me look after her. Let me honor her. Let me try to say nice words to make her smile. I don't need to comment about how fat she is or how short she is or anything else which is negative. I rather say good words. No, you know, you are my beloved wife. No, Alhamdulillah, I love you. I really appreciate you. And subhanallah, they go through their difficulties when they are expecting children themselves. And for us as men, it's quite simple. You did the easiest job. That's what you did. They are the ones who held the child, they are the ones who looked after the child. It's Allah's plan, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He kept male and female physically different. He kept them emotionally different. It's his plan. We cannot deny that even those who are trying to convince us that male and female are equal physically, externally, they are foolish. They know deep down that what they are saying is not correct. We believe in a certain type of equality. That equality refers to three, three things. One is certain aspects where men and women are exactly the same certain aspects where men are slightly privileged than male than females and certain aspects where females are slightly privileged than males these are the three you cannot say they are exactly the same in everything but you can say yes they have access to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a similar way they have so much in terms of their rights their rights are for them just like they were against them meaning if they have rights they need to fulfill then you also need to fulfill similar rights of an equal nature for them subhanallah it's a verse of the quran there are rights on either side these rights may differ in nature but they add up to become equal in the sense that you do something she will have to do something in return she does something you will have to do something in return that's how it is so Allah has created it in a beautiful way. This link that we have is a gift because the mother will not leave the child crying for longer than a certain period of time. And I want to give advice to those who have babies as children. I have a little child who is now a few weeks old, mashallah. And I can tell you that being a, a parent of many children, I have quite a few children, alhamdulillah. The last time I counted, mashallah, I arrived at the figure eight. Wallahi alhamd. But I tell you, something interesting is, the men get angry sometimes when the child is crying and crying and crying more and crying more. You make like the wife wants the child to cry. That's not true. She wants more desperately than you to stop the child crying. So please help. Don't make it difficult. Don't start screaming. You can't keep the child quiet. Look, it's your child as well. What's wrong? No, no, no. May Allah forgive us. Wherever we have faulted, Wallahi, may Allah forgive us. Don't get upset. The mother wants more desperately to keep the child quiet than you. Do you know this? The mother wants more desperately to keep the child quiet than you because she knows that, look, this is not, the aim is not to make the child cry. I must deal with the child, whether it is hunger, whether it is, for example, a nappy change, whether it is frightening, the child is frightened, whatever it is, that it is too hot, too cold, etc., etc. You know what? You need to help as well. You need to make sure you contribute. There is a love towards the child. That was the point I was raising. That's a gift of Allah. But as the child grows older, you send the child to school. Allah takes away from you one by one the control over that child. Do you know that? It's amazing. When the child was born, you decided what to feed the child, what to name the child. You decided how to clothe the child. 
you decided how to carry the child, where to take the child. Absolutely everything was decided by who? By you. Allah gave you almost full control. Many aspects. You bought the toys, agreed? MashaAllah, unless someone gave you a gift, subhanAllah. But you bought the toys, you decided I will do this and I will not do this. When the child grew a little bit older, Allah takes away slowly, slowly, one by one, things go. How does it go? So you buy a toy, the child says, I don't want this toy. Why? Now I know how to talk. Dad, how can you buy me a little, you know, one of those little beaters when you know that I'm looking for an electronic toy? I don't want this. So now you have an issue. You, the mother wants to dress the child in a specific way. It was okay up to now. Then the child says, no, I don't want to dress with this clothing. I want to wear something else. I need my Superman. I'm sure you've heard this, isn't it? I want my Superman suit. Too much television. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So while you have full control of the child, be careful what you do. Because as the child grows older, it will start thinking on its own, doing its own thing. That's the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So amazingly, you, at the beginning, you decide which school you want the child to go. You choose the kindergarten and the child is gone. And mashallah, you are happy. When you send the child to school, as much as the child might cry the first day, you are also a little bit worried. Why? Now the child is going to mix with other children. Now we don't know what's going to happen. I hope everything's okay, my child. You, you are gone to work. You are busy thinking. Let me check up. You might just go to the school halfway through the day just to have a quick peep and come back. You might phone the teacher. Is she okay? Is he okay? That was you at the beginning. And after they got used to it, you got used to it, you stepped back and the child continued. And then the child says, Dad, you know what? I don't want to go to the school anymore. What happened? That's the child talking to you. Allah is showing you that there's going to be a problem. You need to listen and talk. You need to communicate with this child. So now you start speaking to the child and the child then tells you that, for example, I'm happy or I have friends or this person said something or the teacher told me something. You get so angry, but you don't know the child might not be telling you the truth. You get angry, you go to the school, you know, my child this and my child that. What are you doing? You are defending your child. Where did this come from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the Rahman. This is the role of the parents. But Allah is telling you as parents, listen, you will start having very limited control over the child. Let me move a little bit further. So as the child grows older, one day when the child wants to study something, the subjects the child will choose. Then the child will say, Dad, I want to marry. Can you say no? You have to go back to Allah. That's what you have to do. Look at what Allah told you. What did Allah say? It is not your right to say yes and no from your own pocket. Did you know that? Why? That child belonged to Allah, not to you. Allah occupied you and tested you. I told you at the beginning two aspects. Test for the parents, test for the child. Allah occupied you and tested you by giving you an amana to make you happy, for you to be able to say, my child, yet it's not your child, it's Allah's child. For you, it's temporary for a short period of time. For Allah, it was before the child came to you and it will remain after the child goes away from you. You understand? For you, it's temporary. How long? I don't even know. Allah says, I'm giving you something. When I want it, I will take it back without asking you. When Allah takes a child away, Allah doesn't ask you, look, I'm thinking of taking your child away. Allah takes it, gone. Subhanallah, you are left with an issue, another problem. You start to cry. It's normal. It's, it's, it's rahmah to see the tears. Rahmah. So the child comes and says, I want to marry. You need to go back to the instruction. Oh Allah, you gave me an amana. I looked after this amana. I grew up this amana. And what happened is, now this amana of yours, it belongs to you, is telling me I would like to marry. Many parents make a mistake. They say to the child, you are ungrateful. I looked after you. I brought you up. I sent you to school. I went to work and spent money on you. I did this. And today you want to marry someone I disagree with. That statement is foolish. That is foolish. That you are removing Allah from the equation. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can tell you, hey, listen, I gave you the child. You cried for the child. You didn't have children. I gave you the child after so long. And I told you to look after the child. And I told you that I will take away control, your control of that child, because the control is supremely mine. 
I gave it to you for a period of time. When you had it, you should have done whatever. Then I told you, when the child wants to marry, you need to follow a certain way and a certain method. What is the method? Go back to the Prophet ﷺ. He says, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيدٌ if someone comes to you with a proposal, you are satisfied with their level of deen, their religion, and their akhlaq, their character and conduct. Let it happen. For as long as the child is happy, your daughter is happy, the son is happy, for example. If they are not happy, it will not happen. Did you know that? You can never force a child to marry, no matter who. We have a system in some countries, in many countries, where it is a culture that the child will marry the cousin, whether you like it or you don't like it. It's over. From the point of birth, you are already fixed. You don't even know. That is against Allah's instruction. If they are happy, they can do it. No harm. You can marry your cousin in Islam. If you are happy, you can. I am married to a cousin of mine. Subhanallah. If you are happy, you can. If you are not happy, it will not happen. Don't force. You might talk about it and explain the merit of it. Don't force. My brothers and sisters, this is absolutely important. The ummah is suffering. I get thousands of complaints on a weekly basis. Thousands of complaints on this matter, on this subject. My father is forcing me. My mother is forcing me. I have a proposal from a person. His color is different. My parents have disagreed. Parents disagree. Look at the boy. Talk to him. Bring him. You find fault in him. Talk about the fault. The color is not a fault. Bilal ibn Rabah was a man from Jannah. In the sense that the Prophet ﷺ, when he came back from Mi'raj, he made it clear. He said, I heard the footsteps of Bilal ibn Rabah in Jannah. Yet they got him married. They married him, subhanallah. They didn't look at his color and say, because he was dark skinned. Have you ever asked yourself, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep some Sahaba of different races? Did you ask yourself that question? What was the point of having Bilal ibn Rabah in the middle of all the Sahaba? Why? Why did Allah keep it? Why was Suhaib al-Rumi, the European man from, from a room? Why was he a Sahabi? Why did Allah have it? Just to show you that Islam is not about race. The race of Bilal ibn Rabah did not drop him down. And the race of Abu Lahab did not raise him in any status. You need to know this. So that is a test for us. I might not like something. I don't like something. I might say, you know what? Oh, I'm so upset. Why did you look if Allah allows it and permits it? And if they want it, it is your duty to let it happen. Whether you like it or you don't, you might talk about it. You might express, look, my daughter, I, inshallah, we can do better. We can this, we can that. Look, my son, I think this and I think that you can explain and talk. You cannot become violent. You cannot threaten. You cannot be a person who just refuses without proper Islamic valid reason. That is an amana, and Allah will take that amana away. That person was born, like I explained at the beginning of this talk, it was not their fault where they were born. It was not their fault. They were born somewhere. Allah chose them to be born. How did they meet? I don't know. You don't know. Perhaps. You need to find out. And if they met, subhanAllah, it's one of those things. Nowadays online, if you did not guide your child the time you had control over the child, don't blame the child for, for having done something that you didn't even talk to them about. Many parents don't discuss the issue of marriage with their children age of 10 and 11 and 12. And guess what? From 10, 11, 12, they already have boyfriends and girlfriends because we don't even talk to them about this matter. Young age, they're already far ahead, far ahead. We think, oh, mashallah, everything is okay, everything is fine. You got them the phone, you got them the mobile, you got them the iPad, you got them the internet, you got the fastest Wi-Fi in your home, and you just said, I love my child. Wait, there's a war coming. Allahu Akbar, there's a war coming. I'm not saying don't get them. Get them, but teach them how to use it. Teach them, restrict them in a certain way, in a beautiful way. I have had cases of people who say, my children are banned. They're not allowed to have mobile phones. One day, the man caught his daughter with six telephones. Where did you get them from? Ah, someone gave me, that guy gave me, another guy gave me. They will give you. They'll give you the phone. Father, what do you think? You did not teach the child how to use the mobile. You just said banned. And you happy? I never got the phone. But you never ever looked. 
She has six telephones. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. May it not happen to us. So what I'm saying is communicate with your children and understand they are an amana from Allah. He has the right to take them away at any time from you. At any time, he can take them away. They are his children before they were yours. He allowed you to say my child for a period of time. Bas. Now let's continue. So as the child grows, mashallah, do you know what? Life is extremely difficult, extremely difficult, extremely difficult. When you were born, you came to this world. This world is full of obstacles and tests. It is a testing ground. It's like a school. Every week you have an examination at the school. Every week you have a test. Every day some people have tests. If you go to a top private school, they will test you every day what you did yesterday. So this is the best, the dunya. Allah is going to test you one after the other. Every day you will be tested what you did, the, what you learned the previous day or earlier in that day or what you know. Allah will test you. Allah says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm sure you've heard this verse. I just said one word. You know, Arabic language, a lot of you might understand a little bit. But when Allah says, نَبْلُوكُمْ It means we will test you. And when he says, لَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ He is emphasizing it so strongly. We will definitely, definitely, definitely test every single one of you. It's going to be test after test after test. That's why you are on earth. Everyone seated here, including myself, we have issues we need to deal with. You have issues. Health issues, we've all struggled with. Whether it's a cough, no matter what it is, we've all struggled with. Health issues. Nobody here can say, I've never had a health issue since I was born up to today. Go and ask your mother. Maybe when you were little, you were a colic child. Maybe you used to scream. Subhanallah. This is the plan of Allah. Why? Because Allah wants to test you. What are you going to do? Some of us, when we are tested, we get angry. Some of us, when we are tested, we get depressed. Allah says, no. There's no point in getting depressed. No point in getting angry. We could not all go to top schools. Agree? We could not all get certain qualifications that we might have wanted. We had to fit in somewhere sometimes. Either because we didn't do that well. Not everyone's brain is exactly the same in capacity. Allah created you. You are good at something. What is it? It might be different from what I am good at. But Allah did not leave you just like that. There is something that He gave you. Sometimes you don't realize what He's given you. He has bestowed upon you some gift that others perhaps don't have to your level. Some people are very intelligent. Some people are good with their hands. Some people are good at mathematics. Some people love biology, geography. Some people are very good at administration. Some people are good as teachers. Some people are good as, for example, computer specialists. Some people are good at sitting and watching. So they are guards. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, I see you are smiling. I didn't say lazy. I said good at sitting and watching. MashaAllah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. You still can have a job. You still can have a job. And you still can go. And how much will you earn? Let me inform you. At the beginning I said, man is such he can adapt. That's Allah's gift to you. You can adapt. The man who earns 50,000 Qatar riyals a month. And another who earns 500 Qatar riyals a month. Trust me, they are eating. Trust me, they are surviving. They get used to it. When that man who's earning 50,000, one day suddenly loses his job and he's not earning, he will struggle. If he's a mu'min, he will make the most of what he has. He probably has saved a little bit in a beautiful way because he knows that I'm a mu'min, I'm a Muslim, and perhaps this is a gift of Allah. I need to make the most of it. And if he is not a mu'min or his iman is weak, he will start to cry. He will become depressed. He will become upset. He will not be able to survive. Not realizing that the one on the street who is wearing a uniform and who's sweeping, he's happy. Assalamu alaikum. He's looking at you. Time for salah. He puts his broom on one side and Allahu Akbar. And he's so happy. He's delighted. MashaAllah. You give him one real. Oh, Jazakallah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. He'll carry your bags, your plastic bags from the supermarket all the way to your hotel room in the middle of the heat. And he won't expect more than one to ten riyals from you. SubhanAllah. And he's happy and delighted. But you are a human being just like him. How come he's doing that? That's a gift of Allah. And he's happier than you are. Yet you've got a thousand riyal in your pocket. That's Allah. Adapt. This is the test. 
This is something that really we need to think about. Don't become depressed at your test because your test is considered a gift for other people in their real life. Does it make sense? I have seen people without legs, wallahi. And they are so happy. I met a man who cannot move for many, many years. May Allah grant him shifa. He is paralyzed from top to bottom. He communicates with his eyes. May Allah grant him cure. But if you see him, you talk to him, you will be motivated because trust me, his contentment and happiness with Allah is far greater by the will of Allah than a lot of us who are seated here today. We have small issues, so don't become depressed. The issues are there. That's what the dunya is all about. I'm here to tell you today that hardships in your life would start from the point of birth. Even before anything is written against you, your hardships have started. You know, Allah says your deeds are going to be written at the age of maturity. When you mature, then the pen is lifted and things are written for you or against you at that age. But your hardships, they start before that. Innocent children, sometimes you ask yourself, why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested this child, the kidney failure? May Allah grant shifa to those who have kidney failure. Why is it that Allah has tested this child? Innocent child cannot see. Innocent child cannot hear. That all is a test. Allah knows why. It's a test for you who are around the child. As for the child, Allah knows that it is Allah's child before it came to you on earth. And it will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And perhaps Allah will grant that child a lofty rank in Jannah.